What's going on everybody and we back with another video and today we're going to talk about uh, anticipating when a stock is going to have a pause, right? We're not saying it's reversing because reversing means that we're bearish on a bullish stock. So what we're talking about here is recognizing when the market needs to pause. For example, if you watch the video that I posted this morning, you can see that I, I called out that a lot of these stocks needed a pause right because there's something known as um, measurements in the stock to know when is it most probable to pause or reverse right so um one of the people in my community asked me uh what do you think about apple right it's reached it's reaching all-time highs and it's very strong now we're all bullish on apple but i pointed out that apple has ran for six straight days without any pauses right and we were heading towards resistance so it's not that we're bearish on apple now because it had one red day is that we recognize that it's been going up for about six days straight and it had no pullbacks right so if i show you that on the hour um you can quickly see exactly what i'm talking about right so looking at apple right here we have one two three four five six days where it's holding this trend and today we're getting next to resistance we peaked out and now we had a reversal right so that reversal is important for you to recognize um not because we're calling out reversals but because um, you need to know when the stock is going to pause, right? So the stock needed to pause. Now, what does that mean? That means that we're now still bullish on Apple and we need to see where this stock bounces, right? So we have the previous support over here at 176. Are we going to reach 176? Only time will tell, right? You don't really want to swing this stock here to the downside because it's really strong right now but what we are looking at is a pause so when we go out to the daily chart and we start putting in these emas in here you can quickly see that we are super extended we are around this resistance and now we are pulling back right so are we going to bounce at the 9 ema are we going to see tomorrow we sell off go below the 9 ema and then turn around and make a u-turn right if we turn around and make a u-turn and finish green with a green hammer like we did back here then we're still bullish on apple you understand one selling day what we do have to notice is the amount of volume that came in at this resistance so what does volume mean that means that something in activity level is spiking so that means that we need to be aware that the the volume has heightened and now we need to be more conservative about the move that it might potentially make that doesn't mean that it's going to reverse that means that we're getting clues that something is changing or something's about to happen right that could very well mean that we continue to the upside but we need to see first bullish signals on the daily chart or on the smaller time frames that let us know that we are going to reverse so we see this uptrend here right now that we have that uptrend mapped out the next thing you could do is uh map out an area that it needs to break so this is the previous high we still really haven't gotten a bounce but for now let's name the bottom of today the bounce right um the bounce is usually identified by some kind of green a reversal or a strong bounce right so we really didn't see that um right here we did bounce off of here so we're going to call it um that the bounce for now right uh so right now we are in this range with apple and it is important that you recognize that we're in a range and we broke this uptrend so that means that we're either going to go sideways or we're going to continue to the downside until the previous res um support and if we remain inside of this range, once we break back above 
184 now we can continue to be bullish on Apple right so these are the things that you need to recognize in real time you understand in real time and it's super crucial that when you are trading that when four o'clock hits you're not just running away from your screen it's important that you put in the work and that you know um, how the market finish the trades that you took during the day did your analysis play out the way you wanted to what can you improve on these are the things you need to recognize right now it's 448 i'm going to spend the next hour um just looking over the market looking over the trades that i took um making sure that we're preparing making sure we're finding opportunity because this is the way that the market needs to be mapped out All right, guys, so if we go into um, our screeners and we go into Finviz and software like that, we can clearly see that communication services was the strongest for the day, and that was followed by healthcare. I'm not gonna count utilities because I don't really trade that, but if I pull up a, a Finviz software and I bring it over here, you can clearly see that if we go into groups, you can start mapping bring out the uh the stock market by visualizing it this way and tracking it day by day so we're going to start off by looking at what was strongest for the day in this case we have communication services i don't really trade utilities so i'm going to go straight to healthcare and then we're going to go to consumer cyclical right technology had a little bit of a break today so remember we were looking for a break in technology because it's ran vigorously and we are looking for a pause so that we can get the best entry possible right now we can see that consumer cyclical was strong for the last week and the last month and healthcare was strong for the last week, but before that, it wasn't that strong. So these might be the first signs that healthcare is starting to uh, become a bullish area. So we want to start off with uh, communication services, and we're going to start off with Meta, right? Because Meta is the strongest in that um, industry and in that sector. So right now, we can see that Meta has room, right? And it's filling this gap over here. So today, we still we still finished off green, right? Not the strongest candle, uh, being that the market entire and an entirety pulled back. So for this to finish green, it's pretty bullish, right? With most most other stocks finishing red. Um, so now. Uh, we want to dig deeper, go into the smaller time frame and see what's going on, right? So we have Meta over here, bullish run. Now we're going sideways. Um, you can see that the high, the low, we broke under, we reclaimed that, and then we sold off end of day. Does that mean that Meta's bearish? No, it does not. We still are holding, right? So even we can break this down to here. And once we break the bottom of this um, consolidation area, we'll probably come down and then we'll push up tomorrow, right? If we break below 169 here, then we can see a breakdown, this past, past support resistance right here. And then uh, we can see a breakdown to this 259 area. So Meta is on our bullish list, right? Disney was previously uh, bearish, but then we saw on the daily chart, we saw on the daily chart that we are starting to get some bullish momentum. Now, Disney is still bearish, but communications is strong, right? So this is so far off from the 50 period moving average. I'm not touching this stock, right? I'm just looking at this bearish momentum and I'm seeing this sideways action and if it breaks above this 21 period moving average and it closes there now i have to pull it put this on a different list because i have to pay attention to disney right so we're looking for disney to break on on top of this uh 21 period moving average which would take it out of this sideways range and we're gonna start seeing the beginning stages of a bullish move in disney right we also have snap now what i like about snap is if we go to the daily right we're on the daily right now um what i like about snap is is that we had this big bearish uh, order flow now we're going sideways and now we are above the 50 period moving average right and we start to see these moving averages align. Now, if we check on the on the monthly, we are also bullish uh, because we have two months of buying, right? Then, if you go on the weekly, we also have five weeks of buying, right? And we are about to cross this 50 period moving average on the weekly. So this could potentially be a very big breakout for Snap, and being that. Um, communication services is strong we can see a breakout and snap right so now that we're looking at the daily we are bullish on the day 
right? We're bullish on the bigger time frames, and we're starting to see these moving averages getting line, right? And we have room to the upside. So I'm gonna put Snap on my list for tomorrow, right? If we get above this $10 area, I could be looking to potentially put on a small position. I normally don't like to trade um, these small caps, right? This is under $15. But if we see Meta pushing, this might have a bigger move, right? So we also have Roblox. So we have this bullish close above the 50 period moving average. So that also makes it significantly bullish. But we are red on the month, right? But if we push above this 42 area, we can start seeing some bullish momentum. So 42 is the area that I'm looking at for Roblox. But I really like the fact that we closed bullish here. So tomorrow, if we trade above 41, we can see a move from 41 to 42. So now we can day trade this and map it out, right? If we get above this price action here, we can take this from 41 to this previous resistance, right? So we have move, we have room and we have a move here that we can potentially take. So I like that it bounced right here. I like this little bull flag. I want to see continuation tomorrow in Roblox. So I'm going to have my eye on communication services. So we have also here uh, Roku. So I really like that Roku had a bullish close above the 50 period moving average, right? We have all of this consolidation here. So if we quickly draw a pattern, we can really identify that Roku was consolidating, broke down to the U to the downside, and now we're seeing a U-turn, right? Now we're seeing this U-turn back to the upside. So I could really see a move in communication services. I really like that it's above the 50 period moving average. I really like that the month is green. I really like that the week is green. I really like that there's buying behind this stock, right? So you can quickly start to identify why should you be involved in a stock? And when smart money is putting money in a stock, I want to be there. You understand? So now we're going to go into the healthcare sector and we're going to see what's going on here, right? So this is the daily. We see this down move and now we see bullish action around this 50 period moving average, right? And this is the top of the sideways range. So tomorrow, if we open up higher and we see a trade higher above the 50 period moving average, we can really see a push from this 38 to $40 area, right? So if we close above 40, now we can start saying, wow, uh, PFE is really starting to look bullish, right? Now we go over to J&J. &J, and we kind of see this movement here also, right? Um, if we draw out this down order flow, we see the break, right? Then it broke again. So we bring it over here. This is where it broke. And now we have this bullish order flow around the 50 period moving average, right? So right here, we see the 50 period moving average. And if we break above this 158 area, we can see from 159 up until 164. So that's the way I'm looking at this. Um, I really like that when uh, stocks move in groups. So we have these groups of communication services and healthcare. So now we're gonna go to Merck, right? And we kind of see kind of like a bullish end to this, but I really didn't like that it pushed and closed under the 50 period moving average. But that means that we just have to pay attention and see if we're gonna get a push in healthcare tomorrow and we can see a push back above the 50 period moving average. And if we close above the 50 period moving average, then Merck has this room from 114 all the way up to 118, right? So this is why it's on the list, right? We had RCL for a while on the list and we are seeing bullish momentum, right? But 
we are coming up against this resistance of 87. So if we get above 87 tomorrow, I can see this running up in the next few days from 87 up until this $95 area, right? So this is a really bullish stock. It has a lot of buying behind it. We see this move right here, right? Up. And then uh, this bullish movement to the to the right here. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to move it like that. And now we can see this move repeated. This move repeated over here, which would probably end us up right here around this $95 area, right? So from bullish move to bullish move, right? That's what we're looking at. So we have RCL on the list. I also like the consolidation of HD and on top of the 50 period moving average. I'm looking for this to push. Also, we have a little bit of resistance here at 300. So this is only a day trade for me until I see more confluence that we're starting to go up. I want to see a push above this 396 area and finally above this 300 area. If we get above 300, we see a big uh, gap fill here. And uh, we can see a move all the way up back to this previous resistance, right? So HD is on my list. Um, Airbnb, bullish close on top of the 50 period moving average. Um, this is the weekly. So yeah, bullish close on top of the 50 period moving average. And um, I really like this consolidation here. Uh, we kind of see a bull flag kind of uh, scenario right here. So ultimately, um, this consolidation around the 50 period moving average, you can see a break right here above 116. It'll probably come up to this 122 area. If we get a rejection here, then you kind of leave it alone. But if we see a breakout, this could potentially be a big, big move for a Airbnb. Now we mentioned financials and we see that the Bank of America is starting to have a consolidation around the 50 period moving average and also around the top of this range. So this is super, super uh, bullish setup if we get a break above this 20, $29 area, right? So we can see above 29 and then this previous resistance of 30. So from 29 to 30. Now remember, it sounds like $1, but this is a $28 stock. So we got to we got to measure it in percentage move, right? So when you're trading options, what matters is the percentage move along with the dollar amount, right? So the percentage move could potentially be big here for Bank of America, right? And then we have Wells Fargo also seeing some bullish action above the 50 period moving average. We see the moving averages are ordered in the right way and um, we are still bearish on the stock overall but if we see a move in financials we can see a move here also right we have uh, gs which is uh, goldman sachs we are still seeing bearish order flow but um i'm also seeing this bull flag kind of scenario here so i want to see a break above this 50 period moving average and then i want to see a break a break above 344 Okay, so now um, Citigroup is also on this list. So this is very early stages for financials. So this is not on the top of my list like communication services, but it's definitely on my list for me to be watching, right? Um, so I'm going to keep track of these sectors. So that's communication services, health, and we also have uh, financial. So we mentioned this morning that a lot of these stocks had to pull back and uh, today we definitely got the pause we were looking for, right? Starting off with Tesla, uh, we can see that we basically finished indecisive for the day, right? So if we go down to the hour chart, um, you can see that we had this really strong resistance right here and now we're looking for a continuation tomorrow possibly. So we can see a break here. Um, I want to see if we retest and then gap up or are we going to continue to trade lower below this 214 area? Uh, we can start seeing more bearish activity 
under 214. So 214 is a level that held. And we want to see if tomorrow we're going to push up higher, right? So today was indecisive and we are going to continue to monitor uh, SPY and Apple to see if we're going to continue higher or if we're going to pull back, right? Go sideways or pull back and then make a next move higher, right? So, so far we're still bullish, but we definitely needed a pause or a pullback, right? And this might just be the first day of the pullback. Um, we can see that Apple had a little bit more selling than usual, right? Um, this was a pretty hard resistance up here, right? From previous highs, we got above it a little bit and then we sold off towards end of day, right? So now Apple stuck in this range and uh, we need to get out of that range, right? So um, we saw Amazon uh, breakout retest. Now we see this bullish movement here. If we get above 125 tomorrow, I'm super bullish on Amazon. Um, and QQQ also had a pullback, right? Um, Carvana is still stuck in his range. So we need to start seeing more bullish action at the bottom of this range to call it a bullish stock, right? So we need to see more bullish action. If it breaks below, then uh, just leave it alone because it's not doing what we want it to do, right? We're not chasing in the opposite direction. We're only trading in the direction that we intend on, on trading on, right? So a little bit of a pullback here in MSFT. Uh, we managed to get below above previous highs for a little bit, but we still want to see more of a push um, in MSFT, preferably above this 340 area, right? So we still finished off bullish on the day, right? So maybe we're just going to get some sideways action um, until we get the next bullish push, right? Uh, Meta. So Meta is still bullish as well. Um, if you go down to the smaller time frames, we are still stuck in the sideways range. So we're, we want to we want to see if support comes in at this area right here, right? Because this is where we first sold off and we saw a push right here. This was um, after hours. So today we came under and we want to see if this 50 period moving average on the hour chart is going to hold, right? Because this is a bullish stock and we're looking for bullish moves. So right now we are looking at JPM, right? Um, financials are actually starting to see some buying, right? And JPM is on the top of that list. So if we look on the monthly, uh, we're starting to see that these moving averages are starting to align as well as on the weekly, right? So the, the day started off uh, this week started off a little red, so I really want to see it above this 140 area and If we get above 140, we can really see a pop here and I want to see it Actually break this resistance that I drew out here, right? But um, I really want to see it above 140 and Once it breaks this line here, we can see a push up to the previous high and then if we get above this 141 we can see a continuation and see this move here play out over here, which will probably take us up to this resistance of 144. So that's what I'm looking at on JPM, right? We have upstart. So upstart is pretty much consolidating again, right? We see this consolidation that previously happened. We see it happening over, over here again. So this consolidation like this, right? And we want to see a break of this consolidation so that we can get a move like this, right? Um, so we see this bearish action on the, on the daily and we finished off a little bearish, but remember we are still bullish on the stock. So I really want to see another day of bearish activity. Preferably, I would like to see it touch this $26 area. And then when it gets down to this $26 area, I want to see some buying and see a bullish reversal. And that's going to be a 
the best entry that you can get on the stock for a swing trade, right? And um, it's gonna be a lot of buying pressure. Now, if we break under this 126 and we get back inside of this range, just leave it alone, right? It didn't do what, it, what we want it to do. So um, this is how I'm tracking these stocks. Um, I really like Netflix. Netflix had a, a bullish close here, um, a bit of a rejection at this uh, level of 415, right? But ultimately, um, if we go down to the hour charts, we can see that we popped up and came right back under. So I want to see this range hold on Netflix. So this is the range that I'm looking at. So this is the break and this is the box. And we saw a false breakout here, right? And a breakdown, a retest, false breakout. Now, does that mean Netflix is bearish? No, not until we can break these previous lows over here at 389. So right now what we're looking for is, can we get outside of this box again and ultimately get above this previous high here of 413 that we saw today, right? Um, AMD. AMD and Nvidia are consolidating heavy. So yesterday we spoke about it broke below and I wanted to see consolidation here. We actually broke above and we're still seeing consolidation. I want to see if we're going to break above these highs here, right? So this is the consolidation that I'm looking at and I want to see if tomorrow we can see a bullish push and ultimately get above 121. If we break below, remember this gap fill over here uh, from earnings. So pay attention to that. And because AMD is consolidating, you know that the famous Nvidia is also, right? So nice consolidation here on Nvidia. Um, I want to see a breakout here. Uh, and and that's, uh, that's pretty much it. So thanks a lot guys for watching. Um, if you have any more questions or concerns, just leave comments um, so that I can respond to you and that we can have a better understanding of any confusions you might have. All right. Thanks for watching and until the next video, peace.